see everyone out today. You know, I know uh, when it's time to talk about sensitive subjects, I always notice that the Bible class is down a little lower, but you all showed up anyway. <laughs> I know sometimes the things that we're going to be discussing can get uncomfortable, but it's not those things, it's not something that, uh, that I will shy away from. And I always say, if, uh, if there's ever a subject that I talk about from the scriptures that you're upset about, I'll take it up. We take it up with one and put it in the scripture. Okay? So, <laughs> I didn't put it there. All right? Now, you know, we're starting our, ser our study series on moral issues confronting Christians today. Now, I'm not talking, when I say the word Christian again, I'm talking about those who have obeyed from the heart that unmixed, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about people who, by their faith in who Jesus is and the words he has said and what he's done, avail themselves to what God was offering by being obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ and added to the family of God, which is the church of the living God, right? And also the church of Christ. In other words, we're talking about people who are in Christ and the family of Christ, okay? We're not talking about people who just say they're Christian because they have some Christian values that they observe. Or because a person who calls themselves a Christian because they adhere to some of the, the teachings of Christianity, but have never obeyed the truths of what you must do to become a child of God. Now, I'm, that can be another subject, but a lot of times people want to just name it and claim it. Like you can just run up on God any way you want to and claim something. What you have to understand is that you cannot just decide on your own that you are a child of God. God has to decide that you're his child. Amen. And when God tells you how to become his child, then there's no other way for you to become his child other than what he said. Otherwise, you're calling God a liar, and I'm not going to do that. So we're talking about moral issues confronting Christians. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, I'm not talking about things that are going on in people that call themselves Christians but do not adhere to the teachings of Jesus Christ when it comes down to their faith or their worship or what they call themselves or whatever, okay? I'm talking about those who are all in. Man. You follow me? Yes. Totally have given in to Jesus Christ. Okay, in other words... When a person says that when Jesus actually says something as our master, then it is true. Amen. Now, a lot of times, a lot of people out there are trying to say that, no, I'm a Christian also. Or I'm this type of Christian or that type of Christian. You know, no, either you're a Christian or you're not. You cannot, you know, now, now you know, we've actually used this as an example many different times. How people want to actually say that I'm a certain type of Christian, you know. You know, for example, if I use, if I use for example, say that I'm a black Christian, okay, a black Christian. Okay, I'm going to show you how silly that is, right? <laughs> now, am I, in this country, am I, am I considered a black man? Yes. But am I a black Christian? No. no. And the reason being is because what I've done is I've modified. So here's the point. Does the scripture teach that there is no advantage in being black? There is no male, nor female, nor black. You see my point? No, no, your, your ethnicity, your, 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 your nationality has no value when it comes down to God. Because God will judge you as an individual. Not based on who you are. So it's a waste of my time saying I'm a black Christian. Like that gives me something special. Okay? There's no such thing. Okay? There's no advantage. So either I'm a Christian or I'm not. And when I say I'm a black Christian, what I'm doing is I'm saying, God, I want everything you're offering to me. I want all the benefits and blessings to go along with it. But don't touch my blackness. Don't sound right now. In other words, I want to hold on to that part. <laughs> You see my point? Yeah. Or let's, for example, say, like, you know, yes, I'm a Christian, but I'm a gay Christian. So I, I'll hear everything you say, but don't, don't say nothing. I don't want nothing to do. I don't want you to say anything about my sexual orientation. There you go. That's you see the problem now? Yes. Yes. So I'm trying to get us to understand these moral yes. issues. Yes. Moral issues yes. and facing Christians. Right. Because if you call yourself a Christian, what you're saying is that you adhere to the teachings of Christ and Christ as your Lord. Yes. That he decides what's right and what is wrong. Right. And so anything else that we try to do to modify it, what we're doing is saying that God don't touch that. Oh. Now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know what you're saying. Because yeah. I'm separating myself off unnecessarily. Why would I call myself a black Christian? That's like to call myself, I'm a man Christian. No, I'm a Christian man, but I'm not a man Christian. There's no advantage. There's no male or female when it comes down to advantage. It ain't like I get something better. Matter of fact, I, as a man, I get a burden put on me inside the church. Come on, guys. 
So let's just be, let, I'm not trying to be picky, I'm trying to get our minds to let go of garbage. And just embrace something that's very, very simple to understand. Okay? I don't even need my lesson, I don't even know how I got off of it. Anyway. <laughs> so moral issues facing Christians today. What we're going to do is we're going to touch on two moral issues, but I decided to start off with abortion. Now, the Bible does not say the word abortion, okay? But does that not mean that the Bible cannot teach you something about abortion? No, the Bible can teach you about anything concerning life, okay? And so I decided to go this route because I'm going to talk about the problem with abortion, but I'm also going to talk about how abortion has gotten to the point of where, where it is right now. And the reason that it is a big issue right now is not because of people getting, well, let me just say it this way. The reason that we have such a big abortion issue in this country is because, the main reason is because of sexual immorality. Now I'm going to touch on that next week maybe if I can get through abortion today. That's the big issue. Now, just so you understand, abortion is a moral issue confronting Christians. When you look at the statistics, if I ask a person this question, how many, how many pregnancies happen in the United States every year? It's been going, it's been going down for quite a bit of time. But pregnancies per year is over 6 million. 1.3 million in an induced abortion over a million in uh, 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 miscarriages for, for a birth of four million people per year. Now here's a question, Jermaine. What, what do they tell us is the number one killer of Americans? Number one killer of Americans? Huh? Heart disease. 675,000 people a year die from heart disease. They're one every 37 seconds. What is the second? Cancer? How many people die of cancer? 635,000 people per year die from cancer in this country. But over a million babies are aborted. <laughs> now let's just let that sink in for a second. <laughs> in the U.S., I'm not even talking about other countries, in the U.S., let's just think about that for a second. What are some of the reasons people will justify abortions? Okay, right. Rape, what else? Yeah. Health problems because of, you know, health problems between the mother and the child, right? Let me give you the numbers on that. Of those over a million abortions that actually happen, 1% are because of rape or incest. As a matter of fact, 1% is the high number. Rape or incest, that's together. That's the high number, okay? 6% because of potential health problems for the mother or child. 93% for social reasons. The child is unwanted or inconvenient. Yet the reason that people, when they want to argue over, you know, the, the abortion rights activists, you know, and uh, the, the, you know, the, the people for abortion, people against abortion, the argument always comes up this way when a person wants to say, you know, my rights because it's my body, yada, yada, yada. And they always want to bring up the case of, like, rape or incest. Like, wait a minute. So, your promiscuity doing what you did, you want to hide behind somebody that got raped to get your right to have an abortion? Really? That's what you're going to do? You're going to hide behind that? That's always one of the first arguments made. And that's not even the reason why people are getting abortions. Let me give you some really, some real status of statistics how this actually works out here. Depending on whether you've actually asked the, the, the CDC or whether you want to look at some of the other organizations that actually collect data, like, like the Guttmacher Institute. When you look at what's actually being said, look, do you realize that in this country, in this country when it comes down to pregnancies, okay, 47% of pregnancies are unprepared, unwanted pregnancies in this country. 47%. Meaning people are not trying to get pregnant. Half of those end in abortion. Now that's just crazy. Not everybody that, that gets pregnant accidentally gets an abortion, but the majority of those abortions come from people that just don't want to be pregnant. Amen. Amen. Right. 
And see, a lot of times we think to ourselves, you know, it's one of those subjects that nobody wants to touch because we have rights in this country and we have the rights to do things in this country. But see, when you think about it, when you take the time and slow down and just look at the data, how this goes down, you realize there's a real issue here, okay? So, so what are the gestational ages that abortions are performed? 52% before the ninth week. So what you have to understand, 52% of all abortions happen before the ninth week. That's, that's actually two months or less, okay? 12% between the ninth and the tenth week. I mean, 25% sorry, between the ninth and tenth week. 12% between the eleventh and twelfth week. 6% between the thirteenth and fifteenth week. 4% between the sixteenth and twentieth week. And 16,450 per year after the twentieth week, after five months. And the way to go about doing it is horrific. So here's the question for you ladies that paid attention to biology class, because I did not. How long before, <laughs> how long before a baby inside the womb develops fingers? I think it's earlier than that. You get fingers, you start getting fingers pretty early. Like, I, no, it's actually more than that. It's actually little, like over a month. It's actually fingers and everything. So here's the point, okay? One of the issues, one of the, one of the arguments is made, the first argument that's made for those that are pro-abortion is that, well, it's not a baby. It's not a life yet. Why? Why do they say it's not a life yet? What do they call a baby? Fetus. What else? Embryo. Fetus, right? And it's not a life just yet. It's not a person yet because it's a fetus or an embryo. Now, here's the point. Do you realize that there was a time that as a human, part of my human journey, human journey of life, I started off as an embryo. As a human, I started off as an embryo. As a human, I developed into a fetus. As a human, I was delivered and became, was delivered as a male child, but I was a male even before I was even came out of it. So my point I make is, just calling somebody something an embryo and calling something something a fetus does not make it non-human, right. not a person. Amen. Oh, that's right. I always say, what is she going to give birth to? A washing machine? Mm -hmm. The only thing she's going to give birth to is a woman. That's it. Seriously. <laughs> well, isn't God satisfied? We're going to get to that point. See, that's the whole thing. We see. What we're doing is, by the simple fact, by the simple fact, now watch this when you're watching the arguments and stuff, by the simple fact that abortion rights activists will never call it a baby or a child, ever. Yes. Yes. They will insist on embryo and insist on fetus. fetus. Yes. Why do they insist on saying embryo and fetus? Step away and say it's not a human. Right. See, okay. so by the simple fact that they're insisting that it's a fetus or an embryo, yeah, not isn't that forcing on my mind that you know something is wrong? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, like my sister said, there's not puppies in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see my point? Yeah. If there's puppies in there, maybe you could actually just follow. Oh, no. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let me tell you something. <laughs> How messed up our country is! If it was puppies, everybody would be up in arms. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know we live in a country that will actually that will actually save dogs and animals and all kind of stuff. But the human life is like way down the line. But you fool around, you fool around and mess around with somebody's dog or something like that. Man, they want to tie you up and somebody's boarding dog puppies. Like what? The sea turtle and the golden eagle—they are protected in the egg. <laughs> Our babies and our wounds. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Because God has a human being soul. Yeah. God We're created in God's image, image, right? Yes. Not yes. sea turtles and when you think about this, whales, all of this stuff, it's amazing how we'll put that much value on the life of like a whale. You let a whale actually come up and they'll be trying to push that whale back and put water on it and everything. Everybody be up in arm. We were actually, we were actually eating dinner one time down in San Carlos. We're sitting at our table out on the beach and everything. Me and Cecilia are by our right. And then there's a table right next to us. They're eating their dinner. Mm -hmm. They didn't get a chance to finish their dinner. The, the, the trucks came in and everything, moved their chair, moved them out of the way to let the sea turtles out so they could, like, little sea turtles could actually make it back to the ocean. Mm -hmm. yes. 
Did he not move moved everybody out of the way? No, you cannot eat here right now. Just move everybody. Everybody at this table was in the way. They didn't care if you finished eating or not. Your junk got moved. Yeah. But what about my food? I paid for this. this no, get out of the way. The sea turtles. Yeah. Now, am I against the sea turtles? No. No. My point I'm trying to make is, what kind of country we live in when more value is put on an animal uh, yeah. than on a person? Now, yeah. here's another point. By the simple fact that they refuse to say child yeah. lets you know in their mind something's wrong. What do you have to say? Right. I'm just going to say, as you can tell, I've had this conversation a lot because this is one of my hot button items. <laughs> And, uh, but you want a big fight? Try to tell them that it's just an embryo in that turtle egg, and you really have a fight. <laughs> just an embryo. It's just an embryo. It's just an embryo. It's just an embryo. That's your big physical. Like just grab it up with my sausage over here, you know? Man, you get people with. Yes. Let me tell you something. Matter of fact, if you get. Let me tell you, tell you how bad this is. It got bad. I'm telling you something right now, dude. I don't know how much trouble you've ever been in with the law. But if you, you know, in Mexico, they eat, they, they have this, 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 this food called, this soup called kawapa, okay? Which is actually sea turtle, it's a sea turtle. If you get caught eating a sea turtle, that's a class four fella. You're gonna do some serious time. <laughs> serious, serious time. You may as well like, 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 if he invites us over his house and he got sea turtle in his house, we may as well just leave at that time. Like, no, I'm out of here. I'm wiping my fingerprints off the door and everything. I was not there. We're going to be coming and putting all kinds of stuff in his books for a long time over sea turtle. But you could afford a baby. Wow. <laughs> and there's nothing. Now, now, I kind of got to the end of my lesson before I want to get to it, but my point I'm trying to make is this. When you think about how many abortions happen, and how much, how much effort is put into trying to justify this? My body, it's an embryo. It's not has not breathed life yet, so it's not does not have a life. It's not life yet. When the world says that, you have to understand you can't expect sinners to do anything but sin. Yeah. Because that's what sinners yeah. do, right? You can't expect a sinner. You would figure there are certain things that should come natural to you, but some people's got to that point where their mind does not function that way no more. Okay? Just to show you what I'm talking about, you know, of the abortions that actually happen every United States, 43 of all abort percent of all abortions that happen are, are done on women who previously had an abortion. So the big the big majority of them or repeat of him. <laughs> that's that's mind-boggling to me. I can understand this, game, but think about that. The, yes. A huge portion of abortions happen to women that have already had abortions before. Yes. So, so we have to ask this question: What is abortion? In the simplest, the simplest terms, termination of a pregnancy before birth, resulting in the death of the fetus. That's their definition, okay? We also have spontaneous abortions due to disorders or mis what we call miscarriages, right? Induced abortions are intentionally brought on when a pregnancy is unwanted for various reasons. The risk of the mother's health, the fetus or they say fetus, I'm going to say child, if, or the fetus or the child is likely to have serious or physical, mental or health problems. Abortion is the termination of a pregnancy before birth. Now you think about how this is done. Okay? You have the drug-based abortion methods. It's a combination of drugs, like the RU486, which results in contractions to expel the fetus, taken or administered during the first weeks of a confirmed pregnancy. Then there's surgical abortion methods. There's vacuum aspiration, which usually happens between the fourth and fourteenth week, the sixth and the fourteenth week of pregnancy, and electrical pump is used to extract the fetus, often followed by scraping of the uterus. Uh, 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 dilation and curatage of uh, DNC is used in the 6th to 16th week. It involves dilation of the cervix and scraping the uh, uterine lining with a, 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 a curette. Dilation and evacuation used, uh, used between the 16th week up to the 24th week involves a greater dilation, suction, a large curette, and forceps to pull out. Yeah. Induction, abortion, Used between the 4th, the 16th, and 24th week 
a saline solution and other chemicals are used to induce flavor. A hysterotomy, okay, not hysterectomy, hysterotomy, used between the end of the second trimester and into the third trimester. Similar to a cesarean section, the uterus is cut open and the fetus is removed. Intact dilation and extraction, or partial or birth abortion. Used at the end of the second trimester and into the third trimester, the fetus is removed from the uterus through the birth canal, feet first. Suction is used to move the brain and spinal fluid to collapse the skull and allow complete removal of the fetus. They do this so the child does not come out and take a breath. This is a viable fetus. In other words, that child comes out and take a breath. So they keep the head in there, put a suction into the back of his head, suck his brain out, his mind fluid out, collapse his skull, pull it out. <laughs> Everyone, see, everybody, and I'm saying this to Christians now, I'm not talking to the rest of the world. So if, you, if you're a worldly person, it's a waste of time to talk about this because yeah, yeah. I don't expect, we shouldn't expect worldly people to do anything other than worldly stuff. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about moral issues facing. Yeah. Christians. Okay? So we have to ask ourselves a question. Since most people could have understand that this procedure sounds horrific and it's terrible. But see, our primary concern about abortion involves the moral issue. Is abortion sinful? You see, we have to ask ourselves this question, not based on how we feel now. It has to be something outside of ourselves. Because as children of God, we have to understand the standard is what God has said. And if God says something is right, it is right. If God says something is wrong, it is wrong, right? Amen. And so when we look at this, what does the Bible actually say about the unborn in the womb? Psalm, so see it again, Psalm chapter 139, verses 13 and 14. Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14. Joy, get Jeremiah 1 and verse number 5. Sister Jones, get Isaiah 44 and verse number 2. Let's listen to what the Bible actually says concerning yeah. about unborn in the womb. What about the unborn in the womb? Let's see what the Bible reveals. Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. Listen to what David said. Genesis chapter 25, 
verses 20 and 21. <laughs> now listen to this now. Now y'all remember this, y'all remember the story now. Yeah. But you have to understand what's actually happening here. Uh, 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 uh. Now, can y'all remember who uh, 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 Isaac's children were? Yeah. Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. What was special about them? Twins. They were twins, right? Yeah, right. They were twins. Yeah. So this is who we're talking about. Jacob and Even though say Jacob and Esau here, but we're talking about Jacob and Esau right. inside their mother's womb. Now look at this. In Genesis chapter 25, verses 20 and 21, what does the Bible say, Parker? It says, And I was 40 years old, and he took Rebecca to wife, the daughter of Bethel, the Syrian of Hadan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. And I took it to and treated the Lord with his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated upon her, I mean him. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Now watch this, verse 22. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if, if he saw, why am I thus? And she went to the choir of the Lord. It says the children yeah. struggled inside of her. Inside of her. He didn't say the fetuses struggle inside of her, the embryo. He said the children. <laughs> you see, what does the Bible say about the unborn in the womb? The Bible says the unborn in the womb are children. <laughs> we need to make sure we catch that. You want to see it again? 2 Kings chapter 19 and in verse number 3, Pam. 2 Kings 19 and verse number 3.
babe, or what we call a baby. And then Jesus was born, he's outside, laying in a manger, wrapped, and he called him what? A baby. A babe. A babe. Does God make a differentiation between the two? No. No. You see, let me help you understand just how he feels about it. Just to show you what God says, life actually begins. You see, what you have to understand, if you want to look for a definition of a word or a definition of something when it comes down to life, let, let God define these things. Amen. Everybody, you would turn in your Bible to Exodus chapter 21.
is the unborn fetus that everybody wants to say has as much, is just as much a human being as the mother in this passage. Just as much of a person as the mother. Yeah. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. So, unintentionally taking a life was not a capital offense. No. But this clearly was a capital yeah. offense. Okay? So what else can we learn about the unborn? Let's look at the things that God considers an abomination. Turn your Bible, if you would, to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. And let's begin in verse number 16. Angie, I want you to read 16. Pay close attention now. We're going to read uh, 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 16 through 19. These 16 that the Lord gave. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, he that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord of the brother. Now, let me help you guys understand something here. The one that probably caught your eye was the hand, hands that shed innocent blood. Yes. Okay? So you really think about that. An abomination to God, one of the abominations to God is hands that shed innocent blood. Surely, unborn human beings, unborn children, live children. Would it be, who could be more innocent? <laughs> who could be more innocent than that? Unborn. Who could be more defenseless than that? Unborn children. See, this is an abomination of God. Hands that shed innocent blood. But see, when you go back and look at it, there's a whole lot of things that go along with this hands that shed innocent blood that falls under this abortion problem of proud look thinking. In other words, you're not willing to humble yourself and acknowledge that you are God's creation. Yeah. A proud look is an abomination. A lying tongue. Yeah. This is not. This is a child. This is a person. Right. Not an it. The yeah. lying tongue. Yeah. The heart that devises wicked imaginations. Yeah. Feet that be swift in running to mission. Yeah. So what I'm saying is like, look, the abortion issue falls under like five things of the seven things that God consists of an abomination, but especially hands that shed yeah. innocent blood. Yeah. The Bible and Christian view of the of the Intentional death of unborn has always been that is murder. The Bible yes, stands. The Bible stands for the unborn right. to intentionally bring about the death of the unborn. The Bible stands that has always been murder. Amen. Amen. You see, that's the point I want to make sure we get here. So, what is a Christian response? You see, what is our response? Amen. You think about that. Yeah. We live in a country, think about this. We live in a country that will fight really, really hard to save the lives of hardened criminals. Think about that for a second. Yeah. No, the death penalty is immoral. Yes. Yeah. To save the lives of people who have just, just, just terrorized, yeah. you know, civilized people, yeah. human beings. You put all this trouble, spend all this money to save the lives of murderers, yeah. but won't come to the aid of innocence. Yeah. <laughs> you think about how bad that is. You know, you know, you think about, you think about, think about when the Bible actually like says, you think about how far you have your moral compass has to be off. Right. To where you would actually say if something is evil, that evil is good. Of something that is good is evil. Right. You know, the Bible also spoke about woe unto them yeah. that say bitter is sweet and yeah. sweet is bitter. Yeah. In other words, your moral compass is so far off that things that should be setting your teeth on edge and yeah. making your mouth comfortable, you say it's sweet and delicious. <laughs> your moral compass is so far off right. that things that should be tasting good to you, you don't even want it. That is exactly where we are. Yes. Inside the church. Inside. 
Because I showed this before, and we're going to see this again later on. When it comes down to sexual immorality, when it comes down to divorce, and all these things we're going to be talking about, you have to understand the national averages, the national percentages are reflected inside the church. These are moral issues facing the church that lets us know that the country is affecting us instead of us affecting the country. You see, we don't have to put, I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. No. But let's make sure we understand what I'm talking Amen. about here. When you're understanding, when you're understanding the percentages of abortions that actually happen, what you have to understand when you're talking about per thousand, per thousand women inside the United States, you're talking per thousand, you're talking about 55 per thousand. That means you're in a room with a thousand women, 55 of them have had abortions. If you're in a congregation with 2,000 people and half of them women, you've got a bunch of abortions sitting yeah. right there among them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, making these arguments, I have the right to do my body what I want to. Yeah. Should, a Christian, should a Christian man even say that? No, no. That's right, you're not your own anymore. Need to be let out of that fort. Right. 
And so what you have to understand, he's saying that, that even though we're meek and gentle, the way Paul describes it, he said, the job is to tear down strongholds. And what is the job? What is it? What is what does tearing down strongholds mean for us? He says in verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In other words, what's the point? The weapons that we have are mighty in God. Meekness, gentleness, and truth. That is our weapons. In other words, we don't go in running roughshod over anybody, right? We come upon, we, we come upon people, we, we're, we're, we're meek because what we have, we have power that is under control. We're not coming in punching people. We also have those that there's gentleness. In other words, we should be easy to be approached. But we're also armed with the weapon of truth. And what we have to understand is by these weapons, these mighty weapons that God has given us, we can cast down imaginations, bringing, uh, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So all these arguments that people are making that are exalting themselves and saying things like uh, calling things different than what God is calling it, fetus. Not a life. See, those strongholds and those imaginations got to get cast down by the truth. Those stands have to be made so that everyone who's professing, see, we keep saying these things. We're thinking that this message is for the world. This message is not for the world. He's writing this to the church at Corinth. And that worldly thinking has to be cast down out of the church. It has to be gone. Amen. You see, seek to lead others to a proper understanding of what is right and what is true. You know, one of the things you have to understand is if you're going to make statements like these we're going to be making, it's never going to be popular what we're saying. It's not popular. You see, here's the thing. I've been asked before, Brother Howe, why are you so dogmatic? And why are you so adamant on everything? I'm like, you, you keep thinking, you keep trying to blame me for something here. Like I'm making this up. Right? What I'm trying to get us to understand is here's where we have to, what we have to try to do. If you're going to be on the Lord's side, our numbers are never going to be huge. They're not. They're not. That's kind of the way it's going to be. Isn't that the truth you made? People walk away every time I people walk away every time I bring these subjects up, right? But here's the point. There are some people out there who are trying to get their moral bearings straight. To try to figure out right and wrong. Yeah. My whole goal is not to hurt anybody's feelings. My whole goal is to be a minister of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So if somebody's actually yeah. looking to know what the Lord has yeah. said, right or wrong, yeah. looking to get their spiritual bearing yeah. straight, yeah. that's who I want us to be. Yeah. Those who just say what the Bible says. Does that mean we live perfect? No. But we do not make excuse for our lousy living. Yeah. If we're living foul, we'll acknowledge that we're wrong and he's right. Yeah. Stop trying to justify stuff that you cannot justify. Amen. You see, I get a kick out of some of the things that I hear on, on TV concerning medical. Y'all know how many people die of diabetes and complications every single United States? Over 600,000. Now, here's the point. What's interesting is when you get these doctors coming on there with diabetes and heart disease, and one of the biggest things that they come on, come on with is, is that it is senseless for anybody to die of diabetes when it's avoidable. Yes. It yes. makes no sense yes. for you to yes. die from diabetes yes. unnecessarily. That's right. Yet these same people <laughs> do not see it as being senseless for over a million people to be put to death innocently every year. Yeah. And it's totally avoidable. say abortion is more avoidable than diabetes. <laughs> so, as citizens living in a free society, we should pray for our leaders that we can live peaceable and godly lives. First yeah. Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. We don't like, we're not people that try to do revolution, rising up and overcoming and, 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 and storming the capital and things. We don't do stuff like that. Yeah. That's not us. 
You see, we are peacemakers. Yeah. And as peacemakers for Christ, we protect the helpless. Right. In other words, many times people, people are caught up in the world and the world they're thinking, think that they have no other options. Think that they have no other hope. Think that their lives are, are over and they cannot be helped. Do you understand we have the message that can deliver them from that hopelessness? Yes. That helplessness? Do you understand that the people who do not know the Lord, who have abortions, suffer guilt and depression? Amen. Amen. Because they feel, because they, in their heart of hearts, they know yes. that they kill yes. somebody? Amen. Do you understand we have a message yes. that can give them hope? Yes. That can give them guarantees that yes, they can be saved, yes, they can be forgiven? But you cannot hold on to these type of things like they're acceptable. They're not acceptable. Yes. Yeah. You see, what we have to understand as peacemakers, the first thing we're trying to do is get people to make peace Man. with them and God. Man. Man. Peace with themselves. Yeah. Peace with the society. Peace with their family. Man. You see, we have to be able to offer godly counsel. Yeah. Sometimes we have to be able to offer financial help for somebody that made a mistake and cannot fix what they got going on. Sometimes we have to, do, especially the, the kind of counsel that will be necessary for somebody who suffered at the, at the uh, end of that 1% incest and rape mm -hmm. and got pregnant. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. what you have to understand is that we have a job to do. Yes. We don't just turn our eyes and just say, like, yeah. no, it's wrong. No, we have something to do. Yeah. <laughs> Related concerns. Things that we as children of God need to address. We need to address things of, that, that, that have been putting out there concerning who belongs to who. What about women's rights? You know? What about women's rights? Well, what about human rights? Right? What about women's rights? Right to choose, right to prophecy to control their own bodies. And I think the right to choose and the right to privacy and the right to control your own body, I think that's a right that you have as an individual to an extent. But what you have to understand is that such rights are important, but a woman's right to have, uh, the woman's right to do what she wants to do to her body physically is one thing. But what we have to understand, does anybody, now think about this for a second, does any woman or man have the right in this country to physically abuse their children? No, 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 no. There's laws against abusing children in this country. Our problem is we just redefine children, haven't we? <laughs> you see, that's one of the issues we have. You know, when you think about a, a woman's right, when you think about her, you know, well, what's my body? Well, really, there's two bodies there. There's your body and the baby body. And what you have to understand, your heart exists for your benefit. Your lungs exist for your benefit. Your liver exists for your benefit. Your womb exists for somebody else's benefit, though. <laughs> and you have a mother or a mother of what your womb is put there for, for somebody else's benefit. To bring somebody else into the womb? Yo, did I step over the line on that one? No. Because you're talking about another being inside you now. A parasite, if you please. Something that's feeding off of you, but still another being. But if you really think about it, when you, when you look at it in the terms that God has said, you know, how crazy would that be that if a dad had his baby in his arms, feeding his baby, right? And I'm responsible for that baby. And yes, my children were leeches. They are parasites. They sucked all the life out of me, the energy out of me, the money out of my pocket. Yes. <laughs> but who would be appalled if I decided I don't want to do this no more and kill my child that I had in my arms? Oh, wow. yeah. But we never even consider that when that child is still in the womb. Yes. See how crazy this is? Well, yes. yes. well, the two, the two in the one body, one of the best things that ever backfired was there was a billboard, I don't know where it was, it was a billboard and it was a baby in a womb. Somebody had, and it was a, it was been into politics, a pro-life, you know, an or, or advertisement. Somebody had crawled up there and written across the baby, my body, my choice. 
which was great, because it's saying the baby has a body and the baby has a choice, too. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of backfired into what they thought it was going to be. And it really flipped it around, and people really saw it the way for it was. That baby has a, you know, has a right to be there. And it's, yeah. a, it's an individual. It's a baby. Yeah. I mean, anyway, I just want to help, I want to help <laughs> us understand, equip your mind to be able to go through this tough process. Because we live in a society yeah. Yeah. to where we write this stuff off. It is so common that we don't even flinch over it anymore. Mm. Which is horrific when somebody kills a child, right? Yeah. Somebody, the, 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 the media will run with that, you know? Even though somebody actually, somebody actually shoots me dead in the parking lot in Avondale, I probably won't even make the news. Shoot a baby, everybody will cover, right? But for some reason, we're not horrified when it comes down to what happens to babies inside the womb. And I want to start thinking and seeing things the way God sees things. Amen. We're so conditioned of where we don't see things. And we don't, it doesn't appall us anymore. That we have to allow God's word outside of how we feel to decide what is right and what is wrong. If God says, if God says it's an abomination to shed innocent blood, it is wrong. And let me help you understand something very plain. You know, when we were kids, we used to say things like, man, you know you're going to double hell for that. Right? Now, there's no such thing. The Bible says double hell. But you know that's something really wrong. You know, when Jesus actually says that, you know, if you do anything to offend one of these children, yeah. it'd be better for you to have a millstone hung around your neck and thrown in the deepest sea than to be free in that day. In other words, I don't know what really that's all about, but I do realize that he, that he has something special prepared for two different groups. One of the groups he has something special prepared for that's not good is false teachers, okay? But also those who offend or injure a child. And see, those are the things you need to make sure you understand. You know, it's like when 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 God has actually made it very very plain that He considers innocence, babies, yeah. as innocent, defenseless, yeah. and it's an abomination. See, He didn't say murder was an abomination. He says abomination is hands that shed innocent yeah. blood. Yeah. Can't even defend himself. I don't know what it is, but God got a special place, and I know I want nothing to do with that. Amen. <laughs> so, Amen. All right, let's move on. Let's, let's all pray. Our gracious Father, we're so thankful. So thankful for all the love you give.